Okay, so I hope that you can hear me. Um, I'm going to look at this real quick. I want to show you how to do this. I have two examples because everyone's problem 11 was different. And this is the one that you asked me about. So if it's a square root, uh, I'm going to handle it differently as if it were a cubed root. So if it's a square root, I'm thinking about perfect squares. I'm thinking about pairs. I'm thinking about um, even numbers here. There's different ways that you can approach this. So my method is um, sometimes I look at the number versus the letter, the variable. I'll put it back together at the end. This is just one method. I have a lot of different ways that I can approach this, but whatever works for you. So if if you want to look at the variables versus the numbers separately, then that that works. Now, um, one of the tricks that you could do is, you know, if it divides evenly, um, even if it doesn't, you could do this, but not everybody, everyone's different with um, their multiplication and division skills. So I don't always show this trick, but <clears throat> I can take, because I want to determine how many pairs of X's I have when there's six of them, I can do six divided by two. So whatever the index is here, if I want to simplify this, I can just straight up take the exponent here and divide by the index. So um, an another way of writing the square root of X to the sixth is X to the sixth halves. The denominator of an exponent is always the index of the radical. So this simplifies to X to the third. The radical sign disappears because there's, there's three groups of two within X to the sixth, if that makes sense. Um, like I said, if this were a cubed root, I would approach it differently. So that means this one's going to simplify the same way, X to the third, okay? I'm looking at these separate. So let me look at the number here. Um, well, let me do this one because this one's easier off, off the top of my head, I think. Um, let's say that I need to simplify the square root of 48. 48 is not a perfect square, but is there a factor of 48 that is a perfect square? And I know four times 12 is 48. Now, if you can't determine anything larger than that, you can start there and work your way from there. And actually, maybe I'll do that with this example. I don't know. Um, I know that 16 times three is 48. So I'm going to use that because 16 is the largest perfect square that I can think of that is a factor of 48. So the square root of 16 I can do, which is four, and the square root of three I can't simplify anymore. So what I have here is this term here is going to simplify with a four on the outside and x to the third on the outside and the three left on the inside when I put it all back together. Now I could do it all together or I could look at it separately. I don't know what works for you. Think about what works for you, okay? Um, I know with this one, I'm gonna say plus, bring my plus sign down. I know with this one, I'm gonna have an X to the third left as well. And I'm gonna show you why I'm writing it this way particularly in a second, but I know I'm gonna have an X to the third here as well. If I also have a square root of three here, then I have like terms that I can pull together. So I'm wondering if this is divisible by three, that's kind of like a giveaway. Um, so we can try that. Let's say off the top of my head, I have no idea. Three goes into 10 three times with a nine, one 18, it goes in 36, that looks good. 108 is 36 times three. So the square root of 108 is the square root of 36 times the square root of three and the square root of 36 is six, and I can't simplify the square root of three anymore. So this one becomes a six on the outside, an x to the third on the outside, and it's left with the square root of three as well. So that means that I can bring these together more because I have like terms. And the only way that I can have like terms when I have variables and square roots is I have to have the same index, the same numbers underneath the same variables, the same exponents. Otherwise, they're not like terms. But these do, they both have an x to the third and a square root of three, x to the third and a square root of three. So I'm saying I have six of them and I wanna add four of them. So I get 10 of them total, actually. Let me go back to my blue. So now I have 10 of these x to the third times the square root of three. That's my answer. Why am I not writing it as? 10 times the square root of three, x to the third. I hate this. Mathematics and, and anyone, that's, anyone that does math is never gonna write it this way. The reason is because it's very simple to mistake the square root and this x to the third underneath it. This x to the third is outside of the square root. I don't want to mistake it. So typically when we have situations like this, 
we do not put anything after the square root unless it's underneath the square root because it can give me it can be mistaken. Um, so if you want, you can write it. You know, I mean, if I'm typing it in, and and actually, um, I did put a video. I did post a video of Mobius where you can actually put it in this exact form. Um, you don't have to type it. So check that out. Anyway, I hope that helps. Um, I guess I could do this one as well. Let me see. I might do it with a little bit less work because um, I got a whole mess here. So <laughs> let's see. I'm going to do move that. Let's focus on the square root of 75. And think about, I think that is 25. Oh, this actually is the same kind of thing. These are all, they're all the same because they're all left with the square root of three underneath. So this is a five times the square root of three, 27. I'm thinking of perfect squares, a nine and a three. Um, factors of 27 that are perfect squares. So this is gonna be three times the square root of three. And then both of them have this square root of X to the fourth, which if I use my little trick, this is the same thing as X to the four divided by two. The index is two, four divided by two, so X squared. So I'm gonna have a five X squared times the square root of three plus a three X squared times the square root of three. And these are like terms because they both have an X squared and they both have a square root of three, which means that I have five of them and I wanna add three of them and that gives me eight of them. And don't change your exponent. And that gives me eight of them, okay? So I have eight x squared times square root of three. So I hope that helps. Um, let me know if it does. Let me know if it doesn't, okay?